Greetings and welcome. I'm Dave the AI Wizard and today we're going to run through the complete process of using AI to generate a detailed isometric battle map for a specific encounter from our chat GPT generated D&D adventure series. Link in the description. Now, that's assuming anyone is still playing D&D after the OGL madness has been resolved. Perhaps I should do a video on asking ChatGPT to convert the adventure to another system. Anyway, the encounter occurs during Act 1 of the Sorcerer's Tower and takes place in a forest clearing near the village of Willowdale, where the reclusive hermit Old Man Harold lives in a hut perched in a tree. As the party arrives, they discover the hut is surrounded by a pack of wolves who they must drive off to save the hermit. The AI describes the battle map as a small clearing in the forest with the hut at the centre and the wolves spread out around it. The hut is a small ramshackle structure built into the branches of an oak tree. The hut is built of branches, twigs and mud and it looks like it could blow over in a strong wind. There is a small door, a window and a chimney but no other visible openings. There is also a line about it being hidden from the ground, which I'm just going to ignore for the purposes of the battle map. Now, there are a few different approaches and techniques we can use for generating battle maps with AI, but for this map, which is pretty simple, I'm going to focus on just three steps. The initial text-to-image prompt to get something broadly usable, iterating on it with image-to-image -to, -image to refine it, and then in-painting and out-painting to add details and to finish it off. Link in the description to my video on setting up Stable Diffusion as a local install. So here we are in Stable Diffusion, and in contrast to the previous battle maps that I've made using AI, I thought it would be interesting this time to try and go with an isometric style. This is obviously a much harder style to create using traditional tools, so I figure it would be a great test and an even better use case for AI if it works. For the prompt, I've got isometric battle map of a small clearing in a fantasy forest in the center is a rustic hut perched in the branches of a large tree then i've got some standard extras i tend to throw in realistic highly detailed fantasy unreal 5. you can really go to town with these extra words and phrases in stable diffusion but these seem to work quite well for this style of battle map so i left it at that and tweaked it as i need it to for the negative prompts, which is stuff the AI tries to avoid, I've got blurry, unfocused, map, cute, fun, retro, 8-bit, red, orange, fire, lava, banner, label, text, watermark, overlay, and UI. Huh, now these should be pretty self-explanatory. Mostly they're just there to nudge the AI towards a cleaner, sharper image that's less likely to look like a screenshot from a video game, which is not what we're going for. Width and height are both set to the model's native size of 768 and for this first pass I just want lots of images to sift through to pick out the best compositions and the best overall starting point. So I've set the sampling steps to 15 which is quite low which means less detailed or refined images but faster generation and the batch count to 20. So we'll get 20 images and can see if any fit the bill. Generating this takes a few minutes on my RTX 2070 Super, which I've sped up here in post. This is why I use a low step count initially, because I get lots of images fairly quickly. If we had a higher step count, it would take a lot longer to generate each image, and so generating a lot of images would, of course, take that much longer still. And here are the results. Some really nice images, but it's clear the AI doesn't seem to have understood the concept of a hut in a tree. So we need to modify our prompt a bit. I've changed the prompt to isometric battle map of a small clearing in a fantasy forest. In the centre is a rustic tree house perched low in the branches of a large tree. Realistic, highly detailed fantasy, Unreal 5. I've also added abstract, broken and split screen to the negative prompts to fine tune it a bit more and to filter out some of the issues I saw with the first batch and we can already see it's doing much better this time. Most images feature a tree at least, and many also make an attempt at putting a structure in it. But 
it is still very much a mixed bag, and this is part of the process. This first stage is all about generating lots of images, many of which will be terrible. But there will also be that one that gets us close, or indeed perhaps differs from what we have in mind, but seeing it takes us in a different, potentially even more interesting direction. This batch is actually really good. Many of these would be perfectly usable, even as they are for simple encounters. But with the specific needs of our encounter, there are a couple, two or three, which stand out. This one, which is more of a house made in a hollowed out tree, but we could always go back and rewrite the encounter description to incorporate that detail if we wanted to. However, it's maybe not exactly isometric, so perhaps not. This one is much more isometric, and the hut could either be out of shot up this trunk, or we could add it in during the next step. But I think this is the one that gives us the best starting point. The projection is good, the hut is very much in the tree and looks suitably ramshackle. We've also got some other trees, a bit of water and details around to give the map some interest. So after just two batches, which arguably could have been just one if we'd crafted our prompt better the first time, and we have a good starting point. In fact, if we were in a hurry, we could pretty much use this image as is. But we're not, so let's click here to send it to image to image and work on it some more. What image to image does is it lets us generate new images based upon a starting image. So we still have our text prompt, but instead of the images being generated from pure noise, now the AI starts from a mixture of noise and our starting image. As we're going to be generating fewer images, we can whack the steps up to, say, 50, so we'll hopefully get something a bit more detailed, and we'll set the batch count to 6. Denoising strength determines how close to the original image the result is going to be, so lower is closer. I'm going to set it to 0.6, which should keep the overall composition and major features more or less the same, while still giving plenty of latitude for the AI to imagine different variations on this theme. So you can see here how image to image is giving us a bunch of very similar maps with the same basic structure, but some really nice and varied details. We've got some different styles, some nice rocks. In quite a few, the hut and tree have sort of merged into just a tall hut, which isn't what we want. But I really like this one. Uh, the hut is still very ramshackle, the tree is kind of knackered, but it's still clearly a gnarled old tree. It does have this weird thing here, almost looks like a gnome, perhaps, but we can fix that later if we need to. I like this one too, it looks almost like a fantasy helter-skelter, like a kid's playground slide or something. It would go great in a witch's garden, perhaps, but... It's not what we want today, so let's stick with the knackered tree one, and it's always worth running this through image to image again to see what it spits out, so let's do that. Maybe it'll get rid of this gnome for us. Now we want to stick closer to the original this time as we're homing in on the perfect map, so I'm going to lower the denoising strength to 0 0.37, so we stay a lot closer to this original. I should probably have upped the step count further at this point, but I didn't. Generally speaking, higher step counts result in more detailed images, but it's not exactly a linear relationship, and sometimes higher step counts can actually look worse. As expected, the differences are pretty minor this time. We've got a few images that have replaced the gnome with a stick or something, which is good. But the one I like best is actually this one, in which the gnome is now even clearer. In fact, they might be a little fisher person or something. But what I like about this map is this sort of balcony area where Old Man Harold can be stood during the encounter. It adds some really interesting tactical detail with the wolves trying to get up there and the players trying to drive them off before they can. So this is definitely an improvement. But there are details we still need to fix, the little Fisher Gnome Man most importantly, and other details we could probably improve on. So we could put the whole thing through image to image again and hope for the best, but given there's only a few small areas that need to be changed, this time we're going to send it to inpainting. So what inpainting lets us do is to mask areas of the image and tell the AI to only regenerate those portions of the map. 
It's basically the same idea as image to image, but applied only to a specific region, with some blending to make sure that the newly generated bit fits seamlessly into the original. So let's just paint our mask over the intruding fisherman gnome fella. We also need to change our prompt at this point because the image we want the AI to generate is just the contents of this little area, which does not include, for example, a treehouse or any of this business. We just want some interesting little detail here, so let's go with a broken rustic fence. We also need to increase our denoising strength to make sure we don't just create variations of the same little fella. Let's set it all the way up to 0.8. We also want to tick this little box for in paint at full resolution, which just means the AI is going to generate the image at its native 768 by 768 resolution and then scale it down to fit it in, which should give us a more detailed image. And we can see it generating a variety of nice little details here. Five rustic fences or fence post type things and one weirdly possibly skeleton guy. I don't know, maybe he's a fence man. Any of the rest would be fine. This one could be used for wolf training, like a kind of slalom course. No? Okay. Let's just go with this little white fence to give a bit of cover to the map. Now we have to send this image back to InPainting again, so we can repeat the process on another area. I want to add some boulders somewhere on this map, and this little weird bit of fence seems kind of out of place. So again, we can just mask it out change our prompt to a large boulder and run it again. We can see it generating some really nice boulder options for us here and you can see how easy it is to just mask an area, give the AI a prompt for what you'd like to see there and let it imagine some options for you. If we didn't like any of those we could just go again or change our prompt. In this instance I do quite like this one. It's a nice example of how using AI can help you to come up with something more interesting than what you might have achieved on your own, because it's not actually a boulder at all, more of a rocky cliff or protrusion, but it gives a nice sense of terrain undulation to the map, which I quite like. If we wanted to change anything else, we could just keep cycling through, in painting wherever we wanted to add details or change some existing feature and just play with the prompts until we got what we wanted. But what if we want to expand the area our map covers beyond the edge of the image? For that, we need to use something called outpainting, which is a special kind of image to image process that uses a script. So we send our current map back to image to image and if we look down at the bottom here, we find this drop-down list for scripts. And the one we're interested in is Out Painting Mark II. We can then choose in which directions and by how much we want to expand the image by. We're just going to stick with the default here and we're going to expand in all directions to give a little more room for the encounter. Now this won't increase the size of the final image. If we wanted to do that, we'd have to manually adjust the target width and height. Instead, it'll essentially scale down the original image and then in-paint in the new details around the edges to expand our map. As you can see, the script runs for each direction individually, so it can take quite a while, which is why I've only gone for a batch count of two here. The end result isn't always perfect, this time it's not bad, but you can see there's a slightly different vibrance to some of the in-painted areas. And we can try and fix that up by sending the whole thing back to image to image for one final round to try and clean it up a little. We do need to make sure we turn off the script, or we'll just outpaint again, and we need to set a suitably low denoising strength, say 0.15. We really just want the AI to tie it all together nicely without actually changing anything too much. Actually, let's make that point 0.2 to give it just a bit more room to work. And as it's generating, we can see these are going to be very similar images, which is what we're hoping for. We just want the AI to tidy up the joins a little bit and not to change too much. Although, especially at the smaller scale, there will be differences still. And here are our final four images to choose from. They're all good. If I was being picky, there are a few little more tweaks that I'd like to make here and there, but in the interest of time and not straying into more advanced techniques, let's just pick this as the final, almost finished battle map. 
the last thing left to do is to upscale this to a higher resolution, which we can do by clicking here, Send to Extras. We're not going to use most of the options on this screen. All we want is a basic AI upscale at this point. Automatic 1111 comes with a few built in. The main one is ESR GAN or ESR GAN 4X. So let's select that. We'll leave it at four times upscaling, which will turn our 768 by 768 image into a 3072 by 3072 image. I'm going to turn down the visibility of the second upscaler here to zero. You can play around with blending two different upscalers together if you want with this, which gives you a bit more fine control over detail versus smoothness. But for now, we're going to keep things simple and generate using just one upscaler. The system will now load the AI upscaler into the graphics card, which uses a completely different model from Stable Diffusion itself. So let's just skip ahead and take a look at the results. As you can see, there are pretty large differences between these upscalers, so you are definitely going to want to experiment and see what works best. For this battle map, I think ESR GAN makes the trees look a little bit too much like fabric, or like textured. So I'm going to go with the LDSR upscaler here, which gives a nice, clean, almost painted look, which I think really works. And that's it, our final complete battle map. Overall, I'm pretty happy. There are certainly some areas I think could be improved. And if this was a set piece battle in the adventure, then I'd spend a lot more time on it and use some more advanced techniques, such as using an image editor to paint in rough changes that I want to make and then letting the AI take care of actually making them look nice and good and integrated into the map. Now, just before we close out, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has been watching, liking and commenting on these videos. I've been absolutely blown away by the response and the growth of this channel. You guys are just amazing. More videos are in the pipeline, including part three of the AI D&D, &D, or maybe I'll change that to Pathfinder Adventure, another much requested Stable Diffusion video, this time focused on generating cool atmospheric artwork for your campaign, like the stuff I plaster all over, most of my other videos, and tons of other stuff. So many ideas, many of which, most of which, came from you guys. So once again, a massive thank you. Keep doing the YouTubes, and I'll see you next time.